So the trailer for GTA 6 has just dropped along with a new logo. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know down in the comments. But regardless, we're going to have a go at redesigning the logo using Adobe Illustrator. And um, I've got no idea how this is going to go, but I am feeling quietly confident. So let's open up Illustrator and get started. Right, so we're now in Illustrator and you can see that I've got the GTA 6 logo here on screen. This is a JPEG and I've got some color swatches up here that I eyedropper tooled with the eyedropper tool to sample them from the image and I've got a lovely little palm tree down here as well. So first of all, let's grab everyone's favorite, the pen tool. Ha, <laughs> not really. Let's make sure we line these up, beautiful. Get rid of that fill and then let's pick a nice bright vibrant stroke there we go chunky let's scale that up and then grab a black rectangle and now i'm just going to use the pen tool again to draw the eye or the one or wait roman numerals yes so it's a v and an i which is a five and a one which equals six hey math Right, anyway, uh, what was I doing? So let's select both the, I'm gonna call it the V and the I. Let's expand both of these, and I'm going to use minus front to subtract the black shape from the V. Now let's grab both numbers or letters, whatever the heck they are, and go and combine these into a compound path. So this has a solid fill color, which is fantastic, but not really because we need to actually add a gradient but we don't want to go and just apply this over in the swatches panel first what we need to do is we actually need to rather bizarrely remove all of the fill colors now i know we can't actually see anything now which is a problem yes but if we go over to the appearance panel what we can do now is add a new fill and then let's pick a gradient here we've got a default black to white you've got to do it this way to be able to add the gradient to the object and this works for text as well so now we've got a gradient we can open up the gradient panel and we can now start picking colors so let's change that white to a yellow we've got a yellow at the bottom and then next along let's add another swatch we've got the medium pink the magenta and then we've got that blue on the end as well. So let's kind of space these out. And I'm working on the inside of the V at the minute, so we want the blue at the top. So let's adjust that angle to 90 degrees. There we go, lovely. And again, I'm gonna to go to the appearance panel and I'm going to duplicate this gradient I've just made. And from the one underneath, make sure that is selected. And from the gradient panel, I'm going to change this. What have we got next? Well, first of all, let's flip it around. Now we can't see anything though because uh, this is actually underneath. So let's go and add a path offset. So, oh, 10 looks about good. You can adjust this as you can see. I think we'll go with 10 and then that needs to go down to purple. So let's make sure we've got the right fill selected. And then from the gradient panel, let's change that blue for the purpley color. Very nice. Okay, once again, we need to go and duplicate this. Working on the bottom one. Let's bump up the offset. Let's go for 22 should be about right. And we're just going to change that gradient. So what have we got on the outside? We've got the purpley one, which goes to the really dark purple. And that is the correct way around. So that's looking pretty good. And that is the V in the I more or less done, except we need to add some palm trees. So I've got my little palm tree down here. Oh, hey, let's bring this back in. And I've got to scale this fella up. Whoa. Okay, bring you to the front. Let's make it a different color so we can actually see. There we go, a bright yellow palm tree. Oh, that was a nice rhyme. Well done, Dan. Right, there we go. Let's fill that up so it fits the letter, fills the letter. I don't know, words. And let's duplicate this with alter option and dragging. I know Kai is going to hate me for that. I'm sorry, Kai, but <laughs> I couldn't help myself. But if you're not like me and you work efficiently, you should definitely do that using the reflect tool. Right, so let's um, just quickly flip this horizontally and hope that Kai isn't watching the video. All right, let's position these nicely. There we go. Okay, couple of palm trees. I could spend forever messing around with them. And what I'm gonna do now is I need to grab the V and the I again. So let's copy and paste this in front. Command or control C, command or control F. Let's bring it to the front and then remove these two fills at the bottom. So we just want one fill at the top and if it makes you feel any better, you can just give it a bright color, just so you can see it. There we go, fantastic. Now what I'm gonna do is actually copy this again, just so I've got it on my clipboard ready to go. Select the first palm tree, and we're going to go to Clipping Mask. 
and it will crop the tree inside the letter V. Oh, another good rhyme. Well done, Dan, you're on a roll. And then I'm gonna paste this in again, and this time select the other tree, Command or Control 7, that is the shortcut. And these are both now cropped. Now I do need to kind of blend these into the letters, numbers, things. So I'm going to have to double click to go back inside and just make sure the color is black. You'll see why in a moment there's a clever little blending mode trick I'm going to do. Double click to go inside, select the palm tree, change the color to black, double click to come back out. So now let's select both of these. We'll, uh, we'll group them together just for fun. Oh, well, there we go. Group together. And let's go to opacity and change the blending mode to soft light. And these blend beautifully into that gradient. Uh, a bit punchy. Let's go for 30%. Mm, 20. No, we'll go for we'll go for 30. There we go. That looks fine. Right now I'm just gonna drag over everything. Make sure it's selected. Group it together. And then I'm gonna fling it off to one side and we'll come back to that one in a minute. Okay, next it's time to select the type tool. Let's click and type our first word grand and then i'm going to set the font to price down and you can get this for free on the internet now i've got that n with the weird descender n's don't typically have a descender but this one has one so i'm gonna to have to figure out how to get around that let's duplicate this a couple of times and go with theft auto so we're gonna to have to do a little bit of work here so first of all, I'm going to select all of these, go to type and create outlines. So these are now no longer editable bits of text. They are in fact just regular shapes. And what I can do is grab my direct selection tool and select some of these points and delete them. Let's grab this point up here. I'm gonna try and rebuild the letter as best I can. I'm not gonna spend too long on this though because I could spend forever which would be uh, incredibly boring to watch let's try and nudge that up let's get that t in place there zoom in thousands of percent just so we get that accuracy and precision there we go fantastic i'm happy with that let's bring it in is that lined up no it isn't bad dan you need to line that up there we go good dan well done uh, I don't like the way the R is squished, so I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to leave it like this, and I'm going to be a cheeky sausage and extend this down as well, because I don't like that gap. Right, now let's select all of these. I've got to do the same with the H, unfortunately, so let's delete those. Grab this point here. And all I'm doing for this is using the direct selection tool and just editing all of these individual anchor points. There we go. That looks about right, and then we'll bring that one there. And you can spend, of course, forever with the spacing, making sure everything is hunky-dory. Okay, that looks cool. So when you're happy and you've got all of your random shapes together, select everything and then unite them together so it's all just one complete shape. And now what we can do is, once again, remove that fill and then go back to the appearance panel and we'll add the white back in this way. And then I'm gonna duplicate this. And on the one underneath, I'm going to change this to, have I got that gradient there? Yes, I do. Fantastic. So we've got that gradient and we need to add the purple on the end. And let's add a path offset. Oops, I think I've jumped ahead a little bit. Uh, let's go for 13. And now I've got to duplicate the white again. And let's change this one to black. Add a path offset. There we go. Let's go for 10. There we go. Fine. So I should have added the black first, and then added the color underneath. But hey, we got the job done and it looks, uh, well, it looks exactly the same, really. And now let's move this into position. Scale it up. That's uh, not too shabby, Dan. Let's bring my VI in. And okay, yeah, let's cut everything. Unlock the background. Delete the background. Add in a rectangle, set the color to black, pop it in the center. Oh wait, is that black? No, proper black. And let's lock the background, paste in the design, and we're done. Except wait, the bottom of the V is coming down way too far. How did I not notice that? Direct selection tool. Let's just extend this down. There we go. Really quick fix. Hopefully no one noticed. Select everything, group it together, recenter everything. And we're good. And there we go. That is the GTA 6 logo done and recreated in Adobe Illustrator. So if you enjoyed this one, well, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Take care and I'll see you next time.